Welcome to Pandora's Box video tutorials. In this lesson, we want to show how to do infrared ID tracking in order to control a layer within Pandora's Box. As this is the sequel of lesson 1, here's just a quick overview of the general requirements of IR ID tracking. So we need OptiTrack IR cameras and hardware recommended by OptiTrack. Further, we need the Coolux ID tags, the Widget Designer Pro, the Coolux USB driver and when using USB cameras the OptiTrack camera SDK. So our 2.5D tracking starts at the same point as our 2D tracking has ended. The only difference right now is that we have more than one camera. As you have learned in the 2D tracking, the output values from the tags were based in pixel values from the camera resolution. As we have now multiple cameras, the position needs to be based in a more global range that is shared by all cameras, and that is meters. Another difference to the 2D mode is that in the 2.5D mode, the y-axis is defined as height from the viewpoint that the camera is mounted above the track area and looks down. If you mount your cameras in a different angle, pay attention that Y is called height in Widget Designer, but in real it's another axis. In all scenarios, the track movement is output as XZ values with a constant Y value. In order to get meter out, we need to calibrate the camera position for each camera in the XYZ space. This means that Widget Designer knows where every camera is positioned and also knows the relation between all cameras. There are two different modes in Widget Designer that can calibrate the XYZ position and as we want to demonstrate both of them, we have to add three more tags to our system because one of them needs four tags. First, we open again the item properties of our ID tag tracker node. Scroll back to global tracking settings and change it to 2.5D tracking. You can now add a constant height with a Y value. In the camera settings we see already our two cameras and since we turned our Quad ID tag on, the tags are already visible in the preview window. Now open the connection manager. Scroll down to ID tag configuration and click on Quad ID tag. A pop-up appears where you can type in the configuration for the Quad ID tag. These are basically the same as we used for the single ID tag in the 2D tracking. Save them to the tags, switch to the tracking mode in the preview window and here we see our four tags including their ID. Finally, we add four tags in the ID tag settings to see the data in the output. In the next step, we need to create a reference for our cameras. The best way herefor is to use a rectangle. So, we put this rectangle, in our case this whiteboard, in an area that is seen by all cameras. Then, we measure the lengths of the sides define the 0, 0 position and the numbering of the points to which we assign our four tags. Now both of our cameras should see the mounted tags on our reference board. Select all cameras with the top entry Click on the settings icon in the camera XYZ calibration and start typing in the measured position of our four points referring to the 0, 0 position. Choose the ID tag mode and type in the tag IDs with the white space between each. Once you've done that, select the first camera and click on Set Origin XYZ. The values beside this button should now show you the position of your first camera relating to the 0, 0 position in meter. 
Do the same with the following cameras. If necessary, you can click the set origin again. For example, if a tag was covered or if you are not satisfied with the result. For selecting them, you can also use the left and right arrows. If you now open the info node, it will show you the position of the tags in meter. Switching to the 3D tracking in the previous settings, we can now see the position of our cameras in 3D space. The second method to get to the position of the cameras is to use the mouse mode. The mouse mode might be of interest for those of you who don't have four tags. We go back to the settings of the XYZ calibration. Attention, I click on all cameras first and change it to mouse mode. Now choose again the grayscale mode. Increase the exposure for all cameras and deselect the IR filter. Select the first camera and click on Set Origin XYZ. In the right top corner you can now see a zoom with which you can choose the position of the four points more precisely. It's important that you set the points in the same order as you defined them in the beginning. As soon as you have clicked a fourth time, the XYZ position of the camera is calculated. Repeat this with the second camera as well. Of course, the more accurate you use the mouse mode, the more accurate the XYZ values of the cameras will be in the end. After setting all four points, you can simply restart the process by clicking Set Origin if you made an error. By the way, you can either move the mouse and left click or use the arrow keys on the keyboard and hit Enter. Switching to the 3D settings, we can see the position of our cameras in the 3D space again. With the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out of the preview, move it in X and Y, and while holding down the Alt key, you can rotate it as well. After enabling the IR filter and decreasing the exposure, we can close this window and in the info node, we now see the variable X and Z values of the tags and the constant Y value. Put this in relation to the values you need in Pandora's box via the range nodes like we did in the 2D tracking before and here we are. In the next lesson we will do the last step and set up a 3D tracking. Have fun and thank you for listening.